And we're back, Nico Lero with Lauren Claire. We're right here to deliver to you, the Silver Screen Dudes, our thoughts, our feelings, which are mixed about uh, season two, episode eight of House of the Dragon. Um, your initial thoughts, mate, and then we'll kind of go into a play by play. But just before we get into that, I noticed that there's still over 90% of you that have not subscribed to the channel. So if you like this guy, and if you like the content that I'm bringing you, please do consider hitting that subscribe button. It helps me out so much with the algorithm, and it allows me to keep bringing you that content. Let's get back to it. I think I was expecting more from it. I mean, I, we both know that, that we enjoy the political and the story-building episodes, but mm. I just feel we should have had something a little bit more. It was a bit of a damp squib. Like, they, they built up Baylor finding Sheep Stealer. Great. Let's see them initially bond. Let's see Helena going into the dragon pit and facing Dreamfire for the first time in, in however long. Just to give you that, you know, when it ends, that you want it, want it to end going, oh, I can't wait to see the next one. But we didn't have that. Like, there were some really good moments, which we'll obviously talk about shortly. But, mm. yeah, a bit of a damp squib for me. How about you? It was weird because there was a lot of things which I, I, I'm kind of on the same plane with the regards to the points you made. Like, Helena not seeing dream fire especially after they said in the episode like oh she's formidable i'm like okay show me show me show me show me show me show me um not having any indication of this cannibal dragon yet despite the fact that it's been shown in promotional materials like that annoyed me a bit i'm like oh you could have built that up a bit more but yeah listen it it did what I, exactly what I thought it would do. I was I said in our in our dragons explained video I'm like no did. dragons are gonna die there's not going to be a battle or it's going to end just as the battle starts, which is kind of, mm. kind of where we are. The thing I got wrong. I mean, that's the biggest plus thought... point. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. The, the biggest plus point is the sky puppies are still alive. Yes. <laughs> that's my biggest plus point there. <laughs> the sky puppies yet. Um, the, the thing that I predict, other thing that I predicted, which was Otto Hightower capturing the kids. That didn't happen. Otto Hightower is captured. That made me go, huh? Yeah, that was, left field right yeah i'm like something so that's some interesting stuff that's happened there but it listen mm. i don't think it did the best job in the world of giving me the don't end don't end don't end you know no, that's that's what you want on a all. season finale right it didn't give me that but it did mm -hmm. put all the pieces in play for season three to be epic yeah i just think it needed something a bit more even if it was just Baylor bonding with sheep steel and literally just seeing them have that bond like we saw with Vermithor and Hugh or or just Helena going down to the dragon pit and Dreamfire bowing to her for the first time in however long just something just that just a little a little nugget of ah oh, and there just there yeah, just yeah. wasn't that I mean it did it did have its good moments but yeah it was just it was just missing I wanted I wanted to come away like you say like oh my god I can't wait to see the next one whereas I came away going eh, okay which well, is I mean, fine on the plus remember we've got that other game of thrones westerosi show next year which is knights of the knights of the order or something like that so that's dropping next year and then the year True. after i'm assuming we get a season three of this so we're not we're not going to have mm -hmm. a, a westerosi sized hole in our hearts for too long thankfully um but there was as you said there was a lot of good in this show and i kind of want to go mm -hmm. through that like the points that i pulled out play for play like yeah yeah that 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 opening with the Lannisters and the pirates, not to start on a downer. I thought that sucked. Uh, yeah, I was I wasn't a fan. It was so random, and yeah. he's so weedy that it was really it, the the whole thing to do with that was so random. Like, there's been no real build to it, no real no real mention of where they're going and who they're speaking to and stuff. So it was kind of like, okay what's going on this is the final episode of the season how are they going to make us understand this element of the story in this amount of time whilst they're telling or finishing you know rounding up all the other stories for the end of the season it was just a bit random for me i, I listen i i think the pirate thing that that's what i was predicting was going to be what captured the boys essentially so mm, they've mm. They, they've set it up but they haven't gone as far as i thought they would go but it, yeah. was, it was specifically not not just the weirdness of it and the randomness of it. Like the actors playing the pirate lords. Oh dear, oh dear. <laughs> it, do you know? Do you know what it? Do you know what it made me feel like? It was like, did you watch Squid Game? Yeah. 
Yeah. Do you remember that point in Squid Game where all the guys in the masks arrived? They're kind of like the pervy old guys. And it yeah. took a weird turn down. It took a left turn down Weird Street. And it was like, why does this feel bad all of a sudden? Because the acting here yeah. is atrocious. And it felt the same here. I was like, I don't know what it was. It completely took me out of the world. I was like, oh, mm -hmm. this feels like theater acting. This, Oh, I'm sorry, theater Quite for cool. aficionados. It feels yeah. forced. It feels pantomime. I'm like, I feel like I'm watching cosplayers, not actors. It just made me go, mm. no, 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 no. This isn't good. Thankfully, we didn't mm. stay on it for too long. Um, and it ended with the important keystone, which was the Lannisters now have their armada. Right? Yeah. So yeah, it did what it set out to achieve. It did how it went about it. I thought was iffy as all hell. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of interesting stuff happened with Aegon this episode. A lot of interesting yeah. stuff. Now, Laris coming into Aegon's room and saying, so we should go. <laughs> like, that, I, I thought that had so many wonderful layers to it. Because, pull the curtain back here. When you say to a king, let's leave, let's leave in secret... This isn't 21st century where, you know, the king's face would be everywhere. There's going to be some parts of the world that don't know what the hell King Aegon looks like. You know? Yeah, yeah. He's, he's not just leaving. He's kind of giving up his kingship with this. Because they're going to go to Essos and stay in the city of Bravos. They don't know what the hell he looks like there. There might be the no. one, the odd person who knew him. But certainly that would have been, I guess, pre-burn and pre-war. This this kind of shriveled thing, like he, he, I don't quite know what Laris's play is here because it kind of strips Aegon of his kingship. I I think he's taking him away to build up his strength and safety. I don't think this is the last we're going to see of him. No. Uh, I think there's going to be a lot of. Um, a lot of bloodshed, a lot of things that are going to happen. I feel like he's going to come back from left field. And I am still, even though he said his dragon is slain, I am still not convinced that Sunfire is dead. Not convinced. Yeah, that was that was my other point. I was like, Sunfire is yeah. dead. Like, that's it. Like, not like, I, I, I knew you were going to be like, not it's a work. They're working us. I, I, I do think it's a work. I 100% <laughs> think it's a work. I don't know why. I've just got this feeling that, yeah. Because when that last scene that we saw, where you could you could still see the dragon moving very slightly, and obviously it gives all impression that he's dead. Mm. I just think that's been done on purpose. I, I, I Listen, don't know why. Can't tell you why. I I still maintain that half dead Aegon is going to be the one that rides Cannibal. If anybody half dead does, Aegon because... and the zombie king and the zombie dragon. The, I, I, sorry. I like that. That is feasible and it's a good story. But it does. I think it's in the books where it says that no one ever rides. The cannibal but again that doesn't mean that the tv show won't change that because that exactly. would be really cool it would be very cool and i think poetically it kind of fits oh you thought i was dead huh well yeah. <laughs> <laughs> rides out of left field on this flaming green dragon like <laughs> it works i'd pop for that yeah right now, now I want to ask, what were your thoughts on this? This, this so I mean, Damon has. Let's move on to Damon now, because it was interesting that there was some treachery afoot here, wasn't there? Like when the yeah. knight said, "We need a king." That was the moment in the show went, "Oh no, it's all going to fall apart for mm. Rhaenyra from within." But then we get to the point with him and the witch, and he touches that damn tree. We see the three-eyed raven. And it's like, and he sees everything. He sees the Night King, you know, the banner for this video. He sees There's Daenerys so... and her he dragons. Sees Daenerys. He sees everything. He sees... Yeah. yeah. He sees everything. And this was one of my favorite parts, actually, because I wasn't expecting it to, to turn in the way that it did when she arrived. It only became obvious who she was. Because, like you say, you know, well, it's a medieval world. Not everybody knows what these people look like. But the way they made that obvious with um, Renera coming into the room, Cyrax landing on the roof so they could see and they made that connection as to who she was then when he emerged from the crowd like that it's like i thought he was basically going to declare and say i'm you know i'm i'm going to be king and blah 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 which is obviously why yeah, they, they were setting it too. up that me too but then with his conclusion like that one it was wonderfully done and it was a real moment of yes come on 
but it also made all his hallucinations and his dreams make sense because as we discussed in our dragons explained video helena is a dragon dreamer and it mm. appears that damon is too at the end of the day she's his niece you know that it's going to be in the line um of, of picking that up and all of that has come full circle as to he was having these dreams and seeing these visions to come to that conclusion to say this isn't my path i'm here to serve her and i just thought it, it came together really really well and kind of rounded that off brilliantly and that was probably the only yes moment that that oh, i had um, you and me have really. a very different take on this then really I, yeah i don't trust damon I just don't trust him. I'm afraid. Yeah. I, I, he no, I don't. I don't. I. I so he came ugh. back very genuine. Do I believe Damon's pledge? It, it, it's one of two ways. Like it's either look, seeing winter is coming has adjusted his lens a bit, and he's like, you know what? Yeah, mm. maybe I was going down this route. Squash all that because this is I bad. What's own. coming? We need to double down here and like consolidate. That's yeah. clearly the avenue you've gone down. But yeah. there's a middle part of me that thinks it's a ruse. I mean, either That's way, you can't trust anything in Westeros. <laughs> exactly, exactly. But either way, Nightboy is dead. Like he is dead. Like, did you see the way yeah. he scattered at the end? And that he was scene? skulking. Like, oh shit. Like, he was gone. <laughs> like, yep. Yep, yep, yep. And it, and it makes that scene with him and Damon talking that much more poignant when Damon says, I didn't take you for a cutthroat. It's like, whoo! Yeah. You yeah. dead, boy! <laughs> you so yeah. dead! But yeah. That, I honestly that... think that it's it's what the, the what you've just said about him doubling down, seeing everything for what it is and saying, this is the path we need to take no matter yeah. what. He might even know they're all going to die, but they it needs to happen for the future of the Targaryen legacy or whatever. And I, f I just feel like it's it's come that way because then whatever happens to Damon, because obviously we, we know pretty much everybody's ultimate fate, you're going to have more empathy for it when it happens and it's going to be more sad because he's ha had all these visions, come to this conclusion, gone back to Renera, doubled down, and then it's going to be like, oh, <laughs> I think most of them are, to be honest with you, but I just think that was built really well. And I think I don't think there's room for him to turn coat now. There's no point. It, it, he knows it's not strong enough, even with, with his army, having seen everything in a brand sort of way. Mm. I just don't see how mm. he'll think that it, it's going to work. I got a wild theory for you here. Wild theory. And it only works with the whole Damon wanted to be king, right? Mm -hmm. And it, it may be, I, I may have forgotten an important detail of who this person I'm about to say was. What if Damon becomes the Night King? Oh, stop it. Yeah. Like, is this, I know, he wanted to be king. There you go, buddy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you got it. Betrayer, usurper. Ultimate evil. There's your king. army, dead army. Army, yeah. But the, the night the king is could ride dragons place. too. Let's remember the he night could. king knew how to ride dragons. And the, there was always rumors there that he was a, a Targaryen as well. However, the wall is already up because of the threat from beyond the wall, and the walkers already being a known sort of thing. But at, no, so no, is no, that no, no, no. At the moment, it's just the song. It's a song of fire and ice. It's a but fear. But why is the wall up then? Because of the fear. This fear is oh, because of the, out the, there. the legend, I suppose. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I thought they were already aware of of, of what know. was going on. I, there. Listen, it may be oh. it might be the biggest pile of gibberish, and I'll be the first to say I don't know how you get it to stick. It's a theory. But goddamn, I think like the f how you get there, I don't know. But the final end result mm. makes the world of sense in my head. It does make sense, especially considering he's drummed up this army from the Riverlands. You know, if they're all going to die, do they turn into the dead army and all that? Yep. It, it does make sense. It's completely, well, completely. Was a, and now on the note of the army, that was a big old army. That was the first thing that made me go, wait, 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 wait. That, that, mm. that's sizable. Like that's. Yeah. 
Well, it's the whole of the Riverlands, isn't it? That's a proper winter it's is coming, army. Houses. Like, it's huge. Here's a question for you. We saw the Starks for the first time marching across the Twins. Yes. What side are they on? The Starks? They're with yeah. Rhaenyra. They're with Rhaenyra. I thought so. I yeah, thought yeah, so. Yeah, yeah. We weren't sure when we were watching. Yeah, we thought so. I also thought it was very powerful the way that they showed the head of the Starks were all like these old guys, not the young Stark who we'd met so far. So it's like the old wolves going to war type thing. I was like, yeah, okay. Yeah. I dig that. I really dig that. I still think making a deal with the phrase is going to come back and bite them in the ass. But we'll see. Well, we how can't, that we know we can't out. trust the phrase. Can't trust the phrase. Um, another thing, bringing it back to King's Landing now. Helena knows about the burning. That made me go, huh? Huh? She's seen it all, hasn't she? This is what I mean. The, the similarities between Helena and Damon, but she, it's happened to her for longer. So yeah. she knows what's going on. That's why she comes across as crazy, but she's not crazy. She's just infor spiritually informed, for want yeah. of a better phrase. So she's seen it all. And who knows how much Helena has seen. And I actually thought of this when we were watching last night. Maybe the reason she doesn't get on Dreamfire or she refused to ride it is because she's seen her own death. Or she's seen the death that she's going to cause and she's got a nice heart. Or that. Or, or all, all of that. it. All of it. All of yeah, it. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That I also thought Eamon played it. The actor who plays Eamon, I keep forgetting his name, God damn it. But I thought he played this role so pitch perfectly in that scene. He went from being the kind of fake but loving brother to being afraid. Like he was like, uh oh, like you could tell in his face, like busted. That is a lie. It's like, yeah, yeah except it's not. And you're actually afraid you're busted now, aren't you, mate? And then when and the he, best and then he goes that. to threaten, he's like, I will kill you. And she's like, your aunt <laughs> it doesn't change a damn thing yeah. that was the best part of it it was the look on her face she's actually becoming one of my favorite characters she's because great. I, i'd have liked to have seen more of her um leading up to this but just that blankness on her face where she was just like it's not going to change anything if you want to kill me kill me you, you're still going to die That's it. it was just it was very powerful very powerful yeah i agree um Right, Ulf. Let's talk about Ulf. He needs to be careful, yeah. huh? Like he's, he's he needs to watch himself. He really does. Like between annoying Jace, between like kind of disrespecting the Queen publicly. Well, you better make me a knight then. It's like, mate. But like, be careful. One thing I liked there. about that is, did you see Renera's face after after he said it? She was stifling a smile. And we sort of got the impression that she actually likes his personality because it shakes things up a little bit. And he probably doesn't care because he probably knows they're all going to end up dying or something's going to happen. And he's like, well, this is me. Take it or leave it. I'm riding your dragon. Who else is going to do it for you? But I, I agree in the sense of, I mean, I know Hugh did say, you know, he's not used to the, the ways of court and stuff like that. Mm. But it's like, yeah, it's basic Smith respect. Is. It's yeah, it's, well, yeah. I mean, it, it's, yeah, it's those levels. But I did like Renera's reaction to that because she was kind of just looking and she was, you could see she she wanted to sort of smile. And I think that was intentional because with that shot that they have on her face, I think they wanted to show that she likes his personality to a degree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah. I hadn't he, considered he, that. I like that. I like that take. Mm. I also thought, like, another instance where I was like, mate, you're really pushing it. This might be the form in which Jace betrays Renarian, because Jace might literally off Ulf. Um, is that I cannot stand this guy. Like, this guy is, like, the embodiment, the personification of what I was warning you about. Plebs riding our dragons. Um, or they could be building it in such a way, which we see, well, we've seen many a time over, that he ends up saving Jace from a situation and then they actually end up connecting before yeah. something happens to one of them because he's building this whole impression, like you say, of these plebs that can't fight and don't have any experience and aren't pure blood. Yeah. But it ultimately, poss possibly, and then he might like gain a different kind of respect for him and then they'll build that and you'll be dead happy to see that and then one of them's going to die and then it'll be dead sad. That sort of theory. I mean, They're I building it for waiting. something. Yeah, they are. They are. Actually, that again, really good point there. 
Um, I was literally just waiting for Jace to say, silence, you dirty little mudblood. I was like, mate, like the, <laughs> the hatred you have for this guy is deep. Um, I think yeah, she's, he she's going to show his, his misplaced view, I think. Something's going to happen to show him that he's wrong in the sense of these people might have, might be different, might have been raised differently, but you're all one and the same when it comes to battle. Speaking of battle... Just bringing, actually, no, I'll save this to the end. I'll save this to the end um, when we talk about that montage they did. Um, just before we mm -hmm. talk about that, I guess the last thing that I we need to touch thing. on, it's the exchange between Renera and Alicent. That yes. was fantastic, man. It was brilliantly that was done. Fantastic. And personally, for I'm really enjoying Alicent's story arc because she was never a bad person. And we obviously saw how everything unfolded and she made a genuine mistake and a misjudgment, but that set everything going. Yeah. So she is basically the source of the problem unintentionally, but she's the source of the problem. Now, she had like a little bit of hubris, a little bit of arrogance about her going, well, of course it's my son. Yeah. Like there was, there was an element of arrogance to her. Mm. Um, but I mean, ultimately, as you said, it's a mistake. Sorry, carry on. Yeah, it is. No, no, it's fine. I, th I feel like it's going to go to one one of two ways here. She's either going to go back to King's Landing, Eamon's going to know where she's been, and he's going to kill her. Which I hope doesn't happen, because that would be nope. a really disappointing ending for her. I don't see or that happening. They, although they, or, or she tries to leave with Helena and the kid, because that's what she said she's going to do. Uh -huh. And they catch them and bring them back. And then she ends up making some sort of sacrifice. Maybe she's, the, like we said this before, maybe she's the one to kill Eamon or she makes a sacrifice to make sure something doesn't happen or something. She needs she needs a big ending. Or or she's just going to escape and go and no one ever knows what happens to her. She, um, I think the role she's going to play to end all this is, well, not end all this, but to end her story, she's got to have a redemption arc. Um, and mm. I think they're teasing that redemption arc now and it's not going to go fulfilled because I'll see your two suggestions, which are good, and I'll present to you door number three. Because actually, just before we get there, can I just say that exchange they had about the type of characters they are when she was like, my husband, mm. my knight, my lover. And Renera was like, ooh, the queen of virtue has a lover. <laughs> and she was like, it was literally that bitch, please. I've got my needs like everyone else. And Renera's yeah. answer, and I thought, was, dead, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But Renera's answer was so cutting. She's like, Yeah, but you made virtue your banner. You portrayed yourself as holier than thou. And shock horror, look at you just yeah. being a, a sinner like the rest of us. I thought that was mm. class mm. what Renera said. Um, yeah, the, the, you also yeah, the, see the. Um, the love between the two of them as well has never gone away. Like that, Correct. that connection, that friendship, like they clearly still very much love each other. But Renera's reaction when she was like, it wasn't, she, she was basically saying, it's not that I don't want to do that, but you know how this works for mm. me to be able to win. Son, son I have to take big on's head yeah. publicly. Yeah. Son son for for a son. A son. And, and that I seemed thought... to accept that. Go on. Alison seemed to accept that. Unwillingly, I mean, reluctantly, but yeah, I think you. I thought the way they left it on her silently, just so you could realize, okay, she's working this out and she's weighing up the good and the bad here. Yeah, yeah. and it also comes back to a comment that Aegon made earlier, which I thought tied in great with this when Laris was saying to him, Well, you know, it could be worse. And Aegon was like, Really? Because I'd take death right now. My what's it has mm. literally been burnt to a sausage. It doesn't exist anymore. I'm shriveled. I'm broken. I can't walk. I, I need no opium to stay alive. Like, nah, mm. I'll take death, bruv. So it's kind of like mm. Alison might actually be, well, in a weird way, Alison could be granting him that escape that he needs. But here's yeah. the thing. Here's the thing. It's when Renera says to him, I must take his head. You know this, as you said, right? That moment was such a character change for Alison when she agreed to it because she's fully now become a character we can empathize with. She's gone mm. from having her power completely stripped and power mm. usually breeds contempt. So that power has gone. So the contempt for her is gone. She's openly said twice now. I effed up. 
Mm. Except this time, she's looking to kind of repent for, for it. And she's looking yeah. to repent in a way that no parent should have to go through. Like mm. killing their mm. own child. Like that's not a choice you make. That's just, it's not a thing, right? But it's a shame it's she... egg on as well. Because I think if it was, if she'd have said it about Eamon, she'd have been like, yeah, all right. He's a bit of a knob. You know, yeah. <laughs> like, it's fine. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's probably the only but... way you're going to stop him she's become such an empathetic character because she is literally just now a mother in despair, a universally yeah, yeah. relatable character. Um, mm -hmm. So it's very clever the way they've carefully maneuvered her away from power and into the realm of empathy with it, with, with this, with this yeah. series. It's really good. But let's talk about that montage. Cause you said this whole, this whole season, this whole series episode, rather it didn't slap, <laughs> but I thought that that ending, that montage was class. And I maintain, it was, you, go on. No, I was going to say, it, it was, but it was full of things that we should have seen a little bit more of, like Baylor and Sheep Stealer just locking eyes and things like that. It was like one of those things should have come like like into fruition just to go, ah. Oh. And everything was kind of like, oh, it's building, it's building, it's building. So we know what we know what's going to happen at the other side. But there was just there was just no oh my god moment but special mention to the two monologues in the episode as well from mm. alan of hull and christian cole they both really were very yeah. poignant in their own ways and they did uh, help Lauren, to... on this channel he's known as sir bitch boy oh sorry sir bitch boy yes <laughs> although in this particular monologue less of a bitch it reminded you why you liked him in the first place uh -huh. It was like yeah. back to how it was before. The way he was talking about Alison, it was like, well, why did you betray her? So is that showing us that his commitment is to the crown? Mm. You know, he, he clearly loves her. So he's betrayed her for the crown. But then yeah. he's acknowledging that they're all basically going to die. So I, I found that very, very poignant. And I thought Alan of Hull's monologue was was brilliant as well. Mm. I think they, they really kind of set their, set their scenes for, for moving forward. Special they do them. special mention to them. I thought the the first sight of Tessarian was awesome. Pretty dragon, man! Wow, beautiful, beautiful dragon. Beautiful, beautiful. Again, wish dragon. we would have seen more of that. Like we've we've still not been introduced to Daeron. Um, that's not so. The, I mean, obviously they they want to drag this out through a couple more seasons. I get that, but there was just too many little loose ends that they could have just tied up one or two, just for viewer satisfaction and yearning to watch the next season but it, it was fine it was fine so here's where i think it's going to go all wrong for allison because I, I was mentioning a door number three to you sorry just before we carry on with this montage i've lost my train of thought where <laughs> i think it's going to work how, how it's going to work with allison door number three because she promised renera aegon's head aegon's yeah. gone she made an empty promise. Aegon's left. Do you really think, after everything Rhaenyra has been put through, she's going to arrive at King's Landing and Alicent will tell her, honestly, I don't know where he is. She's not going to believe that. She's going to be like, right. So you've clearly sent him mm. away so that I can't capture him and it's going gonna, it's gonna to downward spiral again. Meanwhile, Maybe. this comes back to the montage. The Battle of Harrenhal is going on. Now, a prediction that I have said, for, I, I thought it, a few episodes ago, I thought this is how this season ends. Damon's dying, man. Like, like Vega is heading straight towards yeah. Harrenhal. And most mm -hmm. of the dragons are going to King's Landing. Damon is in trouble. Like season three, unless is going to I mean, bear in mind the death of Damon. Bear in mind that obviously he's reconnected with an era. They will come up with a battle plan, so she might send some of the dragons to Harren Hall. So uh, with the king, yeah. when, but, 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 there's chronology. going to be three battles going on at the same time. Remember, she, she well, we think that she they came up, they they made they made their peace and a battle plan before Renera met Alison. Plans change, brother. Yeah. Renair is, yeah. is now heading towards King's Landing and Damon she, is probably I, I none the wiser. I don't think she'll leave him without without 
further dragon support. I, I, I don't think she'll leave him like that. Um, plus, yeah, she doesn't know ends up being where. Because she needs to take some dragons with what? her. So what what if it ends up being kind of a three on three situation or a four on three? Because she needs to take some dragons with her to I King's think... Landing for for the air of importance, yeah, right? So Damon's gonna yeah. have Karak. Sea smoke is already there. Um, mm -hmm. and she, yeah, she may send one or two more. But now here's the kicker: Vagar's heading there. Tessarian is heading. But she there. doesn't know where where um what if, Vagon's what if Dream headed. what if Dreamfire's also heading there. Well, then all the dragons are gone from King's Landing, so they'll be able to take it. But at the yeah, same time... I'm the talking about Damon Allison... being in trouble here. Oh, I see. Uh, yeah. That's, yeah. That's why I just don't think she would only leave him with one dragon, because they probably know they're going to be heading that way. But here's going back to the theory about Alison when she re returns to King's Landing. They could also find out, or Eamon might not go, to Harren Hall on Vagar because he works out or they, they work out somehow that Renera is coming to King's Landing. So Renera is going to go to King's Landing thinking that everything's going to be clear, but it's not. So Damon might be safe for a little while because they know what's coming and Renera is going to get ambushed or otherwise. Renera gets ambushed. Interesting. Oh, this, see, here's the hype. This can go so many interesting ways. Yeah. Yeah. Man, roll on season three. That's all I'll say. Any Anything final you want to add before we wrap up? No, no. I, th I think I think we pretty much covered everything. Like it, th th There were some really, really good moments in it. I'm really looking forward to the next season. Would have liked mm. to have seen a little bit more. But my takeaway is that Sky Puppies are still alive. So they're alive <laughs> for another 18 months. So I'll take that. <laughs> 18 months of sky puppies off screen love it i've got 18 right, months guys. to prepare 18 months to prepare for the death of puppies um <laughs> all right guys thank you as always for watching we've got a load of content coming for you this week lots of reviews we've got some interviews with charlotte kirk and neil marshall coming this week so keep a no neil marshall's next week charlotte kirk's this week uh and michael head is the week after so Lots of interviews coming your way. Some very cool reviews coming. Sky Peel's review is out now. We've just done an explainer video on all the dragons from House of the Dragons. You can go and check that out all on the channel right now. Uh, be sure that you hit the subscribe button right over here to be notified whenever a new video comes out. There's another video for you to watch right over here. Go and check that out. And we will see you on the next video, but also on season three of House of the Dragon. Lauren, Claire, and Nico Lero out for now. Bye, guys.